Okay, people, so we're going to move into section 5.2. In 5.2, uh, we're going to learn about how to find the mean and standard deviation for a discrete random variable. Um, the mean, we'll be using a notation called mu. It's a Greek letter. So whenever we try to calculate the mean of a probability distribution, we'll be using mu. And to calculate this mean, you're going to multiply each outcome times each probability and add the results. The variance, um, we're going to use a notation called sigma squared. That's a Greek letter, so whenever we're computing variance and standard deviation, we'll use sigma. And that's going to be equal to the sum of each outcome squared times the probability. We add all those values together and then subtract out the mean squared. Finally, the standard deviation is simply sigma. Take the square root of the variance. So these are going to be the three key formulas in section 5.2. Mean variance and standard deviation for a probability distribution. So let's go through an example. Okay, let's say we have this uh, problem here. Um, credit cards. Students own 0 to 4 credit cards. These are the probabilities. To compute the mean, we just multiply each outcome with each probability. So multiply each outcome with each probability. And when we get the results, we add the results together. And we can see that for this distribution, the mean is 1.34. Now to compute the variance, we're going to square each of these outcomes and multiply with the probabilities. So that's what we're doing right here is we're taking the square of each outcome and multiplying them with the corresponding probabilities and adding the results. And then one other item that we have to perform is we have to subtract out the mean squared as a part of the process. So we perform each calculation, we add up, we find the sum of all these products and then we subtract the mean squared to get the variance of 1.364. Finally we just take the square root of 1.364 that's going to give us standard deviation. So this is how we calculate the mean variance and standard deviation. Um, this is uh, just remember you're multiplying each outcome with each probability. Don't get too confused with the notation this upper sigma, that's what it infers. It's telling us that we're going to multiply each outcome with each probability. Okay, um, there's a couple of problems for you to try. Um, I'll have the answers posted later, but work out those problems. You know, send me an email if you get stuck. We're now going to go on to our next topic. This next topic in 5.2 deals with what's called the expected value. So the expected value for a game of chance, think of it as a theoretical average. So um, in a game of chance, you're winning and losing. So you always want to average out the winnings and then subtract the loss. So it's very similar to finding the mean that we found previously. You're going to multiply each outcome with each probability, add the results, subtract out the loss. Uh, so let's look at a problem here. It says, assume that a fundraiser is held to raise money for scholarships. 50 students are authorized to sell 10 raffle tickets at a price of $10 per ticket. For one person who purchases, purchases the ticket, the price is $500, or the prize is $500. Compute the expected value. So in this problem, the prize, there's only one prize, and that's $500. Now the chance of winning the 500, well, we have 50 students, each of them are selling 10 raffle tickets. So 10 times 50 is also 500, but that's 500 tickets. And there's one of those tickets will allow the person to win the raffle. Now the loss to a person that purchases one ticket is $10. So they're going to purchase a ticket. Their chance of winning is 1 out of 500 
and um, the prize is 10, is uh, 50, 500. So let's write that down here. So one out of 500, that's the chance of winning. To compute the expected value, you just multiply the whatever the whatever the outcome is for winning times the probability. and then subtract 10. So 500 times 1 out of 500, that's going to be 1 minus 10. What's 1 minus 10? That's negative 9. So negative 9, that's going to be your expected value for this game. So the significance of the expected value, it just says um, uh, it's basically the profit of whoever's putting on the game. So on average, we say that um, $9 is kept by the house, meaning the people that hold the game. So they, they retain... Um, they retain $9 on average from the $10. The other dollar will go to the profit. So $1 times 500 gives us the $500 prize money. These are our basic rules. So if your expected value is less than zero, the game favors the house. If the expected value is zero, the game is fair. If the expected value is greater than zero, the game favors the player. So just keep that in mind. We'll work out another example. Let's say a 30-year-old woman purchases a 25-year term life insurance and pays a yearly premium of $100. The chance that she will live is really high, 0.99987. This is for the upcoming year. Then we're going to compute the expected value. The payout is 100000 so you're going to win 100,000. Uh, the loss is 150. So to calculate the chance that this payout will be given, it's not really a win in, in the sense of gambling because we have to calculate the chance that she will not live for the year, the upcoming year. So you take one minus the chance of living. And by the way, there are people that calculate these probabilities that are called actuaries. That's 0 0.00013. We multiply 100,000 times 0 0.00013 and then subtract 150. So we end up getting 13 minus 150, negative 137. So the profit, and this is the negative means that that's the profit that the insurance company is making. So their profit is 137. And that's going to be it for 5.2. We have a couple of problems for you to try. Um, just please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.